Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this two column checklist with these clickable boxes. Now you don't have to have these check boxes, you can leave them completely blank so that you can just print it out and tick them with a pen, or you can just simply change the color of each box, which I'll show you towards the end of the video. So let's open a new document. So what we need to do is establish what sort of content you're going to have in your checklist. If it's just short words, then you can just have one line. If it's more than that, then you might need a greater space to enter all your different information. So what I will do is just show you how to reduce the size of these margins to allow you as much information in your checklist as possible. So if we go to layout and we go along to margins, click on the drop down, and you can either go to narrow here if that suits you, but I'm going to go to custom margins. And within here, you are able to customize your margins. So I need to customize my left and right. I'm going to enter one centimeter for both of these and then just click OK. And then just at the top here, you can see in your rulers that I have a one centimeter margin. The next thing I need to do is to insert my table. Now I know that I can have 40 rows down here without spreading to a second page. So go up to insert, table, down to insert table. Now I need seven columns because I need a number column, a description column, a checkbox column, then I have a blank for the center and then I have the additional three columns for the right hand side. So I need seven columns and I'm going to put in 40 rows and click OK. Now at present I believe that my cell height is a little bit too narrow. So I'm going to extend the height of my cell by selecting the table by clicking on this top left arrow or you can just click and drag across your table. I'm going to go to layout and the height here I'm just going to put at 0.6, press enter, and you can see it's jumped across to create a new page. So to stop that from happening, I'm going to decrease the size of my margin here by going over to my ruler. Now if your ruler isn't there, you can't see it, go to view and go across to ruler here and just check the box. Then go down and Place your cursor between the grey part and the white section of your ruler at the bottom until it turns into a double headed arrow. Click and then just drag down that margin. As you can see we've decreased the size of the margin therefore increasing the space on your document and then that row has come back onto this single page. Now the next thing I'm going to do, because I want a title here, if I click up here you can see that my cursor won't go into this section at the top. But if I click on the top left cell and press return on my keyboard, you can see that my cursor now is at the top here. Again we've extended into another page, so once again I'm going to reduce my top margin by doing exactly the same as I did for the bottom margin just click and drag up here. Just going to hit the space bar one more time. Now in order that I can space out all of my elements equally, nine and a half centimeters is roughly now the center of your document because we've made a one centimeter margin at each end and it's generally 21 centimeters across your page. So nine and a half is roughly the center of your document. So I'm just going to pull these lines into the center a bit, depending on the gap you want between your two checklist columns. So I'm just going to hover my cursor over the lines. It turns into a double headed arrow. Click and just drag it into the center there. And again, just drag it into the center there. Once I've done that, I'm going to just drag over these column lines so that I can reduce the first column because all I'm going to put in here is numbers. Then increase this column here because that's where I'm going to put my information or my description. And then decrease the size of this column here because this is where I'm going to put my checkbox. 
So the next thing we'll do is just reduce these column sizes here. So we're just going to pull this one out to the side. That's going to be where my checkboxes are. Reduce the size of this one. This is where my numbers will go. And that's about right. Now you can be accurate with this if you want to. If I go over to this column here and click on it, go up to layout and you can see here the width of this column is 1.27 centimeters. If you wanted the same for the numbers on this side, all you would need to do is to highlight this column and change it to 1.27 and press enter and that will reduce the size of that column or increase it to be exactly the same as this one. And then again with this checkbox column here, it's 1.69, copy it, and then highlight this column, go up to the width again, paste in that 1.69, press enter, and you can see it's extended. Now we've got all of our borders for this particular checkbox, but we don't want the borders for the center column. So all we need to do is to highlight that column, go to table design, go along to borders, click on the drop down and then just deselect top border, bottom border and then we need to go to inside border and now you can see all of those borders have disappeared. The cells still exist but we just haven't got the borders which makes it look like we have a nice neat split between our checkboxes. Now all you need to do is just go ahead and enter all the information you need to for your checkbox. Okay so I've just placed in a simple camping checklist here. Now I'm just going to pop in a title so I've got my cursor at the top here. I go to the home tab and then I go to this font section here. I'm just going to increase my font by using the increase font tool here to 16. I'm going to select bold and underline and then I'm going to go ahead and center the text by using center text icon. And there we have our title. Now when it comes to using the checkbox, there's a number of different things you can do depending on how you're going to use it. Now if you want to print it, then you can pretty much go ahead now, print this out and then just use it as a checklist by ticking the boxes. Alternatively, if you wanted to keep this as an online document, then you can do one of two things. The first thing is that you can simply color this box once you've completed the task. So place your cursor in the box, say for example I've packed all my clothes and I want to highlight this box to say I've done it. Put your cursor in the box, go to table design, go to shading, click on the drop down and select a colour of your choice. Let's just select green and there you can see we've just coloured in that cell that says this task has been completed. The other thing you can do is you can insert a clickable box. So all you need to do for this is to place your cursor in the box, go to the developer tab. Now if the tab doesn't exist then there is a video in the description below that shows you how to put this developer tab into your software. Click on developer, go along to checkbox, click on it. Now at the moment you can't click on it because it's not protected. Go up to protect form, click on it and you'll see that box changes slightly with a darker outline. Now if I click on it, you can see I have a cross. Now if you want to make sure that this box is all in line, unprotect the form, go to layout, go across to this section here and go across to this align to center icon. And then you can align this now to the center. When you go back up to the developer tab, don't forget to protect the form so you can click on it but it will mean that the form is now uneditable until you unprotect it. So if I now go in and I try to change some elements, you can see all I can do is click on this box. 
In order to format or change anything, you have to go back to the Developer tab and click off Protect Form. If you want to just copy and paste these boxes, then all you need to do is highlight them, press Command or Control C, click and drag down your column, press Command or Control V. Go back up to Layout, go along here to Align to Center, and align all the boxes to the center. Again, go back up to Developer, Protect the Form. If you don't want the shading, just click on this icon here that says Shading. And then you can go ahead now and you can click on whichever boxes you like once you've completed those tasks. Perfect. If you want to put the boxes over here and just select one of the boxes, Command or Control C, click and drag down the column, Command or Control V. Again, back up to Layout and along to the Align to Center tool. And then you can print it out like this if you want to and just use these boxes to tick with a pen or pencil. Or you can go back up to the Developer tab and select Protect Form. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.